I always just wonder whether the breakfast ever had anything inside of their cups. But now you want to try it? Mm. Is there something in there? At least we've got <laughs> some good coffee here. Very refreshing. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Now we're going to be taking a critical look at some of those stories, um, especially the one from Edo State. Uh, uh, the state of confusion, if you want to call it that way. And uh, that's uh, the uh, impeachment of the Deputy Governor Schreibel. That's Philip Schreibel. Uh, that's our big story one. And we have a guest here with us, but we're going to be talking with him um, about this instance. In Edo State, on Monday the 8th, uh, the State House of Assembly impeached the embattled Deputy Governor, Comrade Philip Schreibel. The decision came following the adoption of the report of a seven-man investigative panel set up by the Assembly to probe allegations of misconduct against Schreibel. Now, the impeachment proceedings culminated in a dramatic vote that saw Schreibel ousted from his position and saw the swearing-in of 38-year-old Omobayo Mavlos Godwins, we made a joke about that earlier, as the new deputy governor. And joining us now to discuss this matter further are Ikechuku Amechi. He is the publisher of the Niche newspaper and Mr. Sam Kabo San. And he joins us live uh, by uh, internet. Welcome, gentlemen, and many thanks for coming on. We really appreciate you for coming on, sirs. Always Good to have you guys. My pleasure. Hey. So, uh, first of all, Kichuku, let me ask you, let me start from you. Um, let's get your individual takes, both of you actually, on the way the matter unfolded all through the week, especially concerning the immediate swearing in of the deputy governor. Many would say that the case of uh, calling, is a case of calling a dog a bad name so that you can hang it. So, Mr. Kichuku, let's start with you, please. Well, I've, I've uh, spoken on this Edo, Edo issue. Uh, well, but first of all, let me also say, Hello to my friend, Sam Cabo. Uh, I've not seen him in a very, very, very long while. So, Sam, you're welcome. Thank you very much. I should also say, uh, I should also say uh, you guys are welcome for facilitating this reunion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. You know, the last time we were at uh, Delhi Independent, you know, and I've uh, been asking after him. I'm hopeful that after this program, I will have his number. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yes. well, um, it will come at a cost because mm -hmm. this was a this was a very expensive reunion that was done at my expense. Uh, yes, that, uh, Sam, definitely you get the number. Uh, uh, Sam was <laughs> on our editorial board, and when I was editor of Daily Independent newspaper, mm -hmm. uh, so my pleasure. Uh, like Thank I said earlier, you guys. Well, so go back. If if we go back to the Edo issue, look. Um, I think last week on this very platform also, I was saying that my problem is what to do with the position of deputy governors in this, in this country. Look, there was a report last week that about 17 or so deputy governors have been impeached since the uh, commencement of the Fourth Republic, which was 1999. If you look at those 17 deputy governors that were impeached, almost all of them, almost all of them, all the impeachments were instigated by their, by their principals, mm -hmm. the governors. So how is it easy that a governor wakes up in the morning, does not like the face of the same man? Mm -hmm. Don't forget that this is a joint ticket. And he gets the State House of Assembly to impeach on gross misconduct, whatever that Which we don't know what exactly is, it might be. Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. It is defined by the man who is making the uh, allegation. And mm -hmm. before you could say Jack Robbins, the deputy governor is thrown out there in the cold, mm -hmm. and that's it. So I am a little bit worried. No matter what the issues are, some people have said that uh, Shaibu had it coming. Mm -hmm. Maybe. But did he commit any crime by aspiring to be governor? Mm -hmm. My take is no. Despite all the things that have been said about zoning and, and all that, if our democracy, and democracy should be what it is, government of the people by the people well, for the people. Can I ask one thing, though? I don't, I don't think we specified exactly what the role of the deputy governor is. Because in an instance where you can simply just kick a deputy governor out and then employ another one with only five months to go, what exactly is that 
person, that individual, that new governor going to do in the, in the next five months? And why is it so easy to just kick out um, the deputy governor? That's the I, point I am making, mm. that the Constitution, those who are talking about tinkering with the Constitution amendment, mm -hmm. they must look at the role of a deputy governor. Mm -hmm. If we don't need a deputy governor, then we have governors who are already emperors. Mm. Let them oversee the affairs of the state. Mm. But to have the position of a deputy governor, we must ensure that they are assigned constitutional rules and that it is not very, very easy for somebody to wake up in the morning and just kick out a deputy governor and appoint another one on his own. Mm. I don't think that is... Proper. That is my position on all this. Let us take away the politics of whatever it is. It is absorbed, if you ask me, that we have elevated our governors to emperors in their states, okay. and of, they can do all they want to do without anybody questioning them. Speaking mm -hmm. of elevation, let's uh, let's talk about uh, we we also look at the legality of, of this as well. When Ms. Ms. Uh, Sam Cabo, you are San and also an indigene of the state as well. Let me turn to you and let's understand the legality of this. Um, like he said, the governor is now, we've now gone to a point of our democracy where governors are now made emperors of state. And I think we also had this conversation uh, off, you know, off record. But what's your own take on this? And, and do you toe the same line as, uh, as uh, Ike Chukwu? Um, <clears throat> let me start with the way the presidency, oh, sorry, the state executive is conceptualized. We have a single uh, governor. At the central, you have a single executive. The same thing you have in the state. It's a single executive that you have in the state. Yes, the constitution says before you go into the election as a governor, you are supposed to have a deputy, and the deputy will become one when you win. And uh, the constitution also made some, what would I call it now, ornamental uh, rules and give those rules to the deputy governor. But aside from you being a governor in waiting, that is, should uh, what the constitution say, if it happens, you become one, you are not in any way better than the errand boy of the governor. The governor is the executive, and most of the time, we saw that in the case of Obasanjo and uh, Atiku. Atiku won in court, but yet Obasanjo went ahead and withdrew all uh, the powers and all the facilities and all the enablements for him to act as vice president. And uh, Atiku was left floating for the whole of the tenor. And that is the way the governor can also uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. act in the state if he chooses to act. But let me Sam. come back to this. Okay, go ahead. So let go me ahead. come back to this. You understand? You see, um, Obaseki, Godwin Obaseki represents what is actually bad, all that is bad in our own democracy. He spent four years without a state house of assembly. And uh, <clears throat> the man with the boots on the ground was Swaibu. Both of them connived. You, um, appropriated the state, pushed aside the state house of assembly. Of course, the judiciary is not in any way better than the state house of assembly in the face of the imperial state governance. So what did you have? They ruled without any checks and balances for four years. And this time around, of course, the same judiciary that they made not to work within the state is fall back to it, and uh, he has seen the effect of what you have when you don't have an effective judiciary that can check the uh, 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 imperial uh, governor. The imperial, like uh, Amiti said, somebody wakes up one day and says, I don't want the, my deputy governor. He goes to the state of assembly, the state of assembly would overnight dig up some funny stories and said, in our view, this amounts to what? Across misconduct. Because that's what the constitution says. Is the constitution that? says you either breach the provisions of the constitution or you act in a way that the state of assembly uh, consider to be 
a cross misconduct. Mr. Sam, and I have a question. Um, now, regarding yeah. the presence and the swearing in, uh, swearing in almost immediately of Godwins, that's marvelous Godwins, uh, the fact that he was actually present there, does that kind of like take away from the credibility of whatever investigations went into Schweibel's investigations by the party or by the governor or, 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 or the body? Does it make it seem preemptive is what I'm asking? It does. It does. But you know, um, the entire impeachment uh, process is not a penal process. It's a political process. Mm. It's basically a remedial process. And uh, once the impeachment is made, no court can uh, reverse it. You know, of course, somebody said in the case of Vlad Duja and all of that, yes, at, at that time, because they didn't go through the, the process, you had uh, the State House of Assembly now being well constituted to act the way it did. Yes, in that case, you can. But in this case, the moment they've made that, they've gone through the processes. Somebody set up a Kankaroo uh, a panel, and the panel overnight, without waiting for the 30 days that I said, and even with a court order, they went ahead and make their own report to say, yes, we we'll find him guilty of uh, the uh, charges. And uh, of course, you should expect what will happen. And that's what happened. The State House of Assembly acted on that, and the gentleman is in peace. Mm. We, we do understand that. Uh, let's look at Edo State and even the in party politics that's going on there, right? Uh, there's a lot of uh, there's campaigning going on at the moment uh, for uh, vying for the, 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 the seat of power, and that's at the governorship. Now, Marvelous Godwins was only last year competing for office in Edo State under a different party, and that's the Labour Party, to be exact. How authentic does it make the impeachment move by the Edo State Assembly? I know um, uh, Sam just talked a bit about whether or not it's legal or not, but let's look at it from a different standpoint. He was competing for another position under another party, and now, out of nowhere, he's been handpicked to become deputy governor. I'll start with you. You know, let's, let's don't mix the two. You know, the impeachment is one side, and the choice of uh, the deputy is something, of course, is an offshoot, a consequence of the impeachment. Uh, but once the impeachment is made, of course, the, the, the uh, vacuum has to be filled. But somebody has raised the point whether or not the State of House of Assembly actually gave their own consent. I did not see any time, at any time, that the name of the gentleman was presented to the House, the House had on it, and uh, uh, made the approval. Mm. Mm. Thank you very much, sir. Let me come to you now. Let me ask this now. Um, that he was, I know Mr. Sam just said that it's, it's two different things, but the fact is that it seems very arbitrary that you can just make any selection, anyhow, just pick from any party and make a, a, a replacement into your party. That also might also seem to uh, affect the credibility or authenticity of these uh, uh, choices. So, Mr. Ikechuku, I, I don't know, what do you think about that? LP to PDP or AP and also all, all, all the uh, parties, what's your take? It still goes back to what I said earlier. It's all about the impunity in the system and the fact that the governors really are not accountable to anybody, not even the constitution that they swore. You see, the, 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 uh, the truth of the matter is that I don't even want to bother myself about whether uh, Godwin's was a member of the Labour Party mm -hmm. and if by virtue of his appointment now, whether he's now a member of the PDP. But there is inherent illegality mm. in the fact of his being sworn in. Because I'm not a lawyer, and Sam will talk better on this. But the constitution says that the governor ought to submit the name of whoever he has picked. Mm -hmm. Yes, the constitution gave him the, this thing to pick. But he ought to have submitted the name to the status of assembly for approval. That was not done. In fact, the, 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 while the impeachment was going on in the status of assembly, Godwin's was already uh, on ground at the government house mm -hmm. with his, people uh, from his, his constituency, including traditional exactly. rulers. And the chief judge was 
to hand him in. So all that we are waiting for was for the pronouncement mm -hmm. to be made, made on the floor of the House of Assembly that Shribe had been impeached and he was in a sworn. Let's talk about uh, Philip Shribe now. Uh, right. He's written to the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Ulukala Di Ariola. Uh, he wants to obtain a, a complaint form to file a formal petition against the Chief Judge of Edo State, Justice Daniel Okumboa. What are the implications of this action, considering the limited time that's left for the governor currently? I think it's only about five months before the next Before the election. next governorship election. I wish him luck, but I don't think anything is going to come out of it. We have, like Sam also said, the judiciary cannot come out of all this mess smelling nice. Nice. <laughs> See, part of the problem we've had since 1999 the judiciary, and that is even more so since 2015 when the APC came into power. They have so much corrupted, I'm sorry to say, they have so much corrupted the judiciary mm. that what we used to know as the, 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 where the common man mm. will go and get some kind of justice mm -hmm. has been eroded. You cannot right now differentiate between the judiciary mm. and the executive. And that is not what mm. it ought to be or how they ought to function. So, well, uh, Nashraibu can try his luck. Like you said, the election is in September. I don't see what they are going to do between now and September that we change the status quo, mm. which is the fact that he is gone. And that is, and look, even the idea of impeachment itself, I think it is just to show him mm -hmm. we can deal with you. Okay, okay. Um, now, real quick, uh, this, uh, very quickly yeah. to get uh, Sam's uh, uh, viewpoint on this. Sam, from a legal point of view, under one minute, because we're running out of time. Quickly, uh, do you think that there, what are going to be the implications? Uh, it's five months uh, to another election, a short period of time. Does he stand a chance? For Schreiber. No, I don't. You know, when you, if you are going to the NGC to make a complaint against the chief judge, you are asking for the chief judge to investigate, for the NGC to in investigate the involvement of the chief judge in the constitution of the panel, whether or not he breached the rules or the provisions of the constitution in the uh, empanelment of the panel that uh, investigated him. You know, I think their own concerns that they have raised that i have read is that he, he had picked people whom the constituency say he shouldn't have picked and uh, if the cj is found guilty of that uh, the best that can happen to him is to satisfy his own retributive ego which is that the cj will be punished but it has nothing to do whether or not the impeachment will be reversed you know if he wants the impeachment to be reversed that it is not the institution that will handle it. It has to be the court as well. And uh, like I have said, I do not see how that one is what uh, one that the court can review. Mm. On the, the issue of uh, the mm. uh, deputy, the mm. issue is whether or not he's qualified to act mm. as one if he is a member of uh, uh, the LP as at the time he was appointed. Because the condition says before you can be a deputy governor, you must be a member of a political party and it is that political party that would what appoint you to the uh, office for which you are vying for mm. uh, but in this case somebody who is lp uh, has been had picked by an imperial governor who doesn't care about the provisions of the constitution and uh, who had acted for all of his tenure uh, in spite and uh, in utter disregard of the Constitution. So, uh, to me, I think actions of Obasaki should also give concern to those who are now sitting and reconsidering what to do with the Constitution. We cannot afford to have this sort of imperial executives. The word imperial can... keeps coming up, uh, and you also uh, agree, Mr. Ikechuku, that that seems to be the theme of our conversation this morning regarding the governor of Obaseki, imperial, but does that make him impugn to anything? And is anybody going to take a look at that, uh, that theme that seems to be running through all governors across Nigeria as imperialists? 
that's it is a matter of trying to you see in some i have written about this concerning the presidency in some other states okay. places like uh, south korea okay. they did okay. not give you all of the executive powers in the hands of one person mr sam mr sam yes, Unfortunately, yes, we have run out of time, but on, we, we want to say thank you very much for joining us this morning on our Made in Edition for Breakfast Extra. Thank you also, Mr. Ikechuku Amechi, publisher of the Nish newspaper. We also had Mr. Sam Kagwe here. Uh, thank you, guys. We appreciate that you guys made it this morning on uh, Breakfast Extra. Many thanks to you gentlemen for doing plenty of justice on uh, the story today.